What is up boys? Back out here. Gotta prime this engine and set it in the car today. Gotta get this starter on. I gotta get my cast on. I almost forgot about that. That'll leak oil right there. There's an O-ring that goes on there. I'll walk you through that. Starter's real easy. I'm sure you guys have all done one before. Two bolts. It'll go right in there. Fill this out with oil. I'll walk you through how to hook a battery up to your starter to prime this thing. Get the oil moving around. I want to get oil everywhere before I put this in the car. Check for small oil leaks. I'd rather deal with that outside of the car. You know what I mean? And then we're going to put this engine in the car today. I got to put the cast on. It goes right here. It's over here. The cast. Let's get this old O-ring off. Jeez, dude, that is old. That's like factory. I mean, so is the new one's factory too, but that's like from freaking 91. And then you also have this bracket that needs to go on there. Let's clean this all up. Just go on like that. All right, these are uh, uh, probably 11 foot pounds. That's what I'm going with. I didn't look it up, to be honest with you. Okay, then your cast. Some people say it matters. I switched these back and forth 180 before, and I never noticed the difference. If you read the form, some people be like, I had it, it kind of ran like shit. I took it out and I flipped it and it ran perfect. So if it runs bad, I'll take it out and flip it, but I never had to do that before. Oh yeah, real quick, you see those nips? They'll go right in those little grooves in there. We're pretty much ready, I think. Starter's on, cast is on. Gotta put some oil in this, hook a battery up to it. I'm gonna go over this one more time, make sure I'm not gonna leak oil anywhere. I am gonna leak oil out of these, but I'm gonna wait for that. I don't know if I've talked about this before or not. I'm gonna leave the oil filter off and the oil cooler lines off. I got plugs for that. Until it starts coming out of there, plug it up. Then it'll come out of this uh, oil pressure sensor. Then once it starts leaking out of that, I'll plug it up. And then it takes a long time to get it up through the oil pump. You can leave everything on there, but there's really no way to tell if you got it coming up to the top yet. These are my plugs for the uh, oil cooler. It'll go in where the oil cooler hooks up to. Now block that off once oil starts coming out of one of them. Okay, I actually lied. I am gonna put an oil filter on. I got some breaking oil. I can't use all breaking oil, I don't have enough. The rest I'm gonna use VR1, which is a lot of zinc in it. So it'll be all right. Okay, now how you wanna hook this up is you're gonna want two power lines. One's gotta go here, this is your switch that usually goes to your ignition, tells it to turn on, and then you're gonna wanna power to this, and then you're gonna wanna put your ground on one of these bolts. That's how you get your starter to kick on. Get all your rags out of here. Have your spark plugs out. I don't know if I said that. I ended up taking my spark plugs back out. One of the videos I put them in, one of you guys commented saying, you know, it'd be a lot easier to crank it. And I'm like, yeah, you're right, I forgot. So get your spark plugs out if you got your spark plugs in. All right, get your battery. You should probably get a battery charger. You are gonna kill a battery, if not two, while doing this. Get this little alligator clip, get it on your little thing where your ignition goes. That's how you tell it to turn on. Goes on that nut. And then your ground needs to go to one of these bolts. It would probably be all right to any part of the transmission, but let's go right there. This is what I'm using the first startup. It's high in zinc. I like this oil. I run it pretty much in everything. And I got a quart of break-in. It has a little bit more additives in it. This calls for 4.8. With that already, with the oil filter already filled up, it took a half a quart. And without the oil cooler, I don't know. I'll probably put like the rest of this in there and then three more. So it'll be a total of four. Crank it over and see where I'm at. And it's 1030. I know you can run 40 in here, but just to get started up, I'll run a little bit thinner. Mainly because this is just what I had laying around. But I've said this a couple of times, this thing's gonna run like 20 minutes. Get it in time. And um, I'm gonna do an oil change on it immediately. Start cranking this thing. It should start pouring out of here first. It's gonna be like 10 minutes. And then once I plug these up, it should come out of there. Then I'll clean that all up, plug it up. And I probably got like a good 20 minutes of running to get it all up through everything. You definitely want it to go up through the turbos. And you can crack these open. I did it on this rear one the last time I might do it again. I cracked this open just to see if it was coming out of there. Okay, I think we're ready, boys. 
feel those valves moving. Everything sounds good. All the pistons are moving. I think it's going to kill this battery first. What happens when everything's bone dry? It takes forever to get that suction going. Yeah, this battery's going to die before it even starts going. It's happened last time too, man. I went through like three batteries. Okay, let's get another battery. Alright, I got the lithium battery hooked up to it. It's been a lot faster. Yeah, we're good on oil still. It hasn't moved. It, it did the same thing last time. I don't know why I'm like panicking. I'm like sitting here wondering if I forgot something. Okay, I'll just bring you guys back once I start getting oil out, I guess. Because I've now been through two batteries. It's my third. There we go. Coming out of there. You guys see it? Now let's plug those. That's four batteries, by the way. Probably about a half hour run time. Next spot should be there. There it is. Coming out of there. Now that's gotta be bone dry before I put that uh, doohickey in there. So this one's a pain. You gotta get that completely dry. Okay, this one I am just putting plumber's tape on. You can see right there, just because I don't wanna wait for this silicone net to dry. And I uh, will take it out, clean it all off with some alcohol, get it all dry, and put red silicone on it. But see, there's no way to get this completely dry. It's just going to keep dripping for right now. It takes a while. I'll probably actually do it before I put it in the car, to be honest with you, because I will uh, just tilt the engine sideways so I can get that dry, dry. Check all these Allen keys. Check all your cam seals. It's gonna take a while to get it all the way up to the top like that, but just keep doing this. Make sure oil is through this whole engine. Just get all these bearings and everything lubed up. Okay, I'm probably just gonna keep doing this for like another half an hour. Just make sure oil gets everywhere. It's leaking out of there a little bit. I told you Teflon tape didn't work for shit. This isn't even running, it's already leaking. Check all these turbo lines. Battery's already dead. I've had a couple of you guys ask me in the past, why do I prime it? Why not just start it? You don't want to start this thing bone dry with no oil in it. It would just wear your bearings out. I'd rather do this and go through like five batteries than just fire it up dry. And just have metal on metal at 1500 RPMs on startup. And what, what do you think this is spinning? 50 RPMs, 20 RPMs, I'd rather just do this, make it safe. Plus all my assembly grease should be protecting it at this low of RPM. Just checking, making sure there's no oil coming out anywhere. All right, boys, so I haven't been recording, my bad. I've kind of just been worried about not having this engine fall on my head while I'm working under it. It's all rigged up right now, just ignore that. The, it's gotta do pretty much a 180. I gotta spin it, put it on some jack stands like that, Rehook it back up and then I got to extend my cherry picker legs out and everything and my arm way out so I can get it in there. And if you remember when I primed this engine that uh, sensor was leaking, I got that all, I got rag in there right now. I got it all drained out and drying it up. Then I'll put some red silicone on it once it's all completely dry, have that sealed up real tight. And then I'll probably prime this one more time when it's in the car. I'll disconnect the ignition and the fuel and spin it over and make sure I got some good oil pressure. We're gonna start putting it in there. I'm gonna have to clean up all these wires, get them up out of the way, the fuel lines, everything needs to go up and above the engine. So I'll bring it right back once I get this down on the ground. I think I'm pretty much ready. I got my legs extended. I got the car as low as I can get it without hitting the subframe with my legs. Gotta move these wires up out of the way. I got this all perfect. I know, I know, I know. Someone's gonna say, you know those brackets that'll bolt onto the heads, right here. I don't want to use them, okay? One, they're not gonna stay on because they're ugly. Who wants this just hanging off the front of their car after all the work I did, okay? Two, I don't want to lift this engine up by the heads. I just don't want to do it. I'm sure it'll be fine, but I, I, I'd rather just lift it up by the block 
and that motor mount on the transmission and that's what I'm doing give me shit in the comments I guess I don't know what to tell you I do not want to pick it up by the heads let's get all these wires and stuff out of the way all this will go to the alternator this will go to the turbos this is a transmission ground this is a battery get these wires up like out of the way so I can get the transmission mount in there this is fuel lines this is transmission linkage this has got to come up this is fuel this is boost gauge dude I think we're ready to put it in here I think we're good let's uh, get this up in the air and get those uh, motor mount bolts out Alright, so I gotta get it to lean like this before I put it in there. The transmission's gotta go down a little bit to line this up perfectly. I'm almost there, I gotta go forward a little bit more. I don't remember exactly how I did this. I might have to just really have to raise the car up because I'm pretty sure the transmission has got to go below the frames. That's why I took that one cross member out. I think the whole thing's going to have to go that way. This is definitely easier if you're doing it by yourself than just to drop the subframe, I think. If you remember when I pulled this out, Adrian talked to me into going through the top because he said he thought it was easier. It's definitely not easier to do this by yourself. Tell you that right now, so then you're having to double check and triple check. If you just drop the sofa frame out, you just line it up and then lower the car on it. I need someone to hold this like this as I lower it, is what I need. Oh shit, that was close. Oh, I nicked it. Definitely would have been easier to do the subframe. Probably would have been better idea to leave that trans mount off. I think I'm on that rear motor mount. Okay. I'm on it. Pretty much lined up on the rear. Just gotta keep checking, make sure I'm not gonna hit anything else. Look at that. Fuck. I mean, I can definitely fix it, but that sucks. Oh yeah, I'm golden there. Everything's gapped out perfect now. I definitely should not have had that on. It would give me a lot more room. I remember now we took that off before we took this engine out. I should have had that off and just hooked to that bolt hole. Right, I gotta get this rear motor mount lined up. Get a bolt in there. And then the rest should fall into place. Dude, this sucks. Trying to do this by yourself. What do I gotta do? I gotta go down and back just like freaking a cut hair. Okay, got halfway in there. Dude, I hate putting my hand under there. Especially with me out here by myself. That'd be a bad day. Be stuck under here forever. Dude, I cannot get that one to line up. I don't know, let's get this front one in. Front one's in. It's bound up somewhere because it is not letting me get it looser or tighter. It's got to come up. It's like the whole thing's got to go this way a little bit. Oh shit! Woo! That took way too long. I'm sure I did that footage up, but that was that was dumb. The bushing was like getting bound up at an angle, so like the bolt was wanting to go in sideways. Okay, well, we got two in. Oh, shit. We should be good. Let me get a nut on that back one. Okay, since I lifted it by the transmission mount, I have to hook up this motor mount to get that chain off of that one before I can hook that one up. Let's see if I can get this in there. 
This one's always fun. I'm just put that on like two threads so it can't pop off. It's nowhere near all the way down yet, but at least this is lined up kind of, sort of. And then I can run those on. Now I can suck this motor up with this and then hopefully I can get this chain off. Now don't just send this home. I only got my impact set to two. That's only like 40 foot pounds. This is what it maxes out at and with this extension it's probably like 30 right now. Okay, I think I can land down. I think we're good. We are golden. Everything's loose. Right? Yep. Sweet. Oh man, I'm on call tonight. If you made it this far, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you're not subscribed. That's hard to do by yourself. I'm not even gonna lie to you guys. I'm super upset that I did that. I mean, I can definitely fix it, wet sand this a little bit, get like one of those paint pens and buff it all in, but that sucks so bad. All right, boys, we'll see you guys in the next one. Everything should be hooked up in the next one. I got that one motor mount left, intake, and just all the wires and fuel lines and all that fun stuff. And I got to hook up that power steering pump. I got a lot to do. It should all be done in the next video, though. Maybe even starting. See ya.